I want to speak for just a little while on some things that, now most of you know this, it's been preached to us over the years, there's nothing new under the sun, the Bible teaches us that, am I right? But there's still all the things, there's nothing new under the sun, but I don't know everything under the sun. Now there's, there's a lot of people who think they know everything. At least they act like it. They try to get that across to people. But there's nobody in here that knows everything. And yes, the Word of God has been around a long time. Most of us, you and I here today, we've, we've had a Bible for years. The Word of God. It's been in our car. It's been in our laps. It's been at home, church. We've had it for years. But church, there's still so much in there that we don't know yet. But there's a God in heaven that can reveal things to you and I. And a lot of people can read the Bible, read that word, and when they get done, they may have learned this or learned that. But I doubt very much if any, everybody in here, every time you get out and read this Bible, you understood everything that you read. I know I don't. There's scriptures in, this, in the Bible that I have, I guess a good word to use is I've wrestled with over, well, for years. When I say wrestle, I don't mean resist it or ignore it. I just I read certain things and yeah, we, we get things out. But then there's just certain scriptures in the Bible I can read and we know this and see this. But there's something just tells me there's more there. I don't know what it is yet, but there's more there. There's scriptures through the scriptures, through the Bible... That every time I come across them, there's more there than what I'm seeing. And I'm hoping, and I'm praying, I'm believing. And from time to time, God does show us a little bit more out of a scripture. Thank the Lord. So what I, I'm going to get into this morning, amen, for however much time we take. I'll try not to keep you too long. But you and I and the world out there, all that will be hearing this, wherever they're at in this world, we need more understanding of God. I believe there's a scripture, I can't recall right off the top of my head, where we're, the Bible says we're forever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of God, something to that effect. We're always learning, but we're not, we, don't, we still don't know it all, church. But there is a way when it comes to salvation, when it comes to being saved, God has made a way for you and I to see that. And I know, according to the Scripture, we can't cover them all this morning, but when it comes to salvation, when it comes to getting yourself saved, or in the right relationship with God. God has given us, there's a measure of faith comes to my mind that God talks about. It's given to every man. And that includes woman. There's a measure of faith that's given to us. Now if we'll take that measure of faith that God gives us, He doesn't give it all to us, but He gives us a measure Every one, every single one of you in here, all of us, we have a measure of faith. Now, what are you going to do with that measure of faith? If you'll take that measure of faith and look into it and let that faith or that word uh, show you something or draw you to God, if you'll follow that, and use that measure of faith, God will give you more. 
And God will reveal more to you. But we're living in a, in a generation today, if I can use that term, where so many people out there, and even in, in, uh, in the church of Jesus Christ, they get to a certain place, a certain plateau, I guess is a good word, and they think, wow, well this is it. No, there's still a whole lot in there that you need to know. And there's a lot out there today that still need, amen, to know more about God. Now this came to my mind a little while ago. I hadn't thought about it when I was studying on this the last few days. There was some singing and testifying. And, and it came to my mind, church, there's a lot of people today that, how can I put it? They don't have that hunger, that drive, to get in there and dig and to look into this. And so they just kind of cast it off and then it gets out of their mind. Well, when that was, you know, when that happens, and somebody was talking to me this morning about that, we need to look more into that and see, well, what's in there? What was God trying to say? Is there a message there for me? Is there a message there for all of us, for the church? But if we don't pursue it, well, we'll never know. Can we say amen? amen? I believe the Bible teaches us also that much is given, much is going to be required. Well, God's given us a lot now. Amen. But when it comes to understanding, there's only one way that we get understanding. And that's through God. Amen. Now God can use the ministry, the, the true ministry, the God called ministry, the ones that are called of God, instructed by God, has God's Spirit in them. Now they can, through the Word, uh, reveal things and show you things. But it still has to come from God even through Him. Now in 1 Corinthians, if you want to turn, we're going to open up in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. An old familiar verse, or verses. I'm afraid too many out there in the world today, like I said a little while ago, they've just got to the place where they think they got it. And they're satisfied where they're at. They're not really trying to go any further, dig a little deeper, look a little bit closer. In fact, there's a lot of them out there when you try to explain something to them that maybe God has dealt with you on or revealed to you, and you try to pass that on like God intends. You know, God doesn't give me something for me to just keep for myself. God doesn't just bless you with something just for you sometimes. He wants you to use it just like your gifts, your talents, your understanding to be a witness, to pass it on to somebody else. But I see we're living in a time where you're trying to pass on something. Amen. Now I'm, sorry, I'm talking about something that we can take to the Scriptures and God opens up to us. People get offended. Well, you're saying I'm not right? <laughs> That's their Usually one of the top, what, are you thinking I'm wrong? What, you think I'm, I'm not where I should be? What's wrong with learning something else? Or looking a little deeper into something instead of just putting a blanket on and saying, I, didn't, I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm at. And I'm fine. Well, church, you'll never grow anymore like that. Man cannot reveal these things to you. By himself. It has to come through God. And that comes through the Spirit of God. So just bear with me for a little while this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to begin, amen, around verse 4. In fact, let's, let's start in verse 1, so we have a good understanding of what's going on here. Paul to the Corinthian church, the first epistle he wrote to the church. And I, brethren... When I came to you, I'm sorry, I came to you 
not with uh, excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And I, brother, when I came, when I came to you. Now, God is what moved upon this man. God is the one that chose this man. And God is the one that gave him the words or the message that he's going to preach to these people. Paul didn't just wake up or grow up as you, before, as you all know, he was Saul and know all the things of God. Saul was a mixed up man. Saul was a deceived man. I have to believe that God had his eyes on Saul long before that day on his way to Damascus with letters in his pocket. I'm persuaded that God, God, God had his eyes on him. I think God knew what I'm going to do. That's where a lot of people are today, church. They're, God's got his eyes on some people. But they get so exalted, maybe, or they get to thinking this, and they're impatient, amen, and they want to speed the process up. Well, I'm glad old Saul didn't speed up the process. I'm glad, amen, that, uh, that the Lord, that God waited till the time was right. And everything is being fulfilled and the prophecy is being fulfilled and now it's time. And I've been saying to some of you younger ones, now I don't know what you're waiting on, but I'm here to tell you it's time for you to get yourself in church. It is time for you to get the Holy Ghost. And I hope this don't offend you, but it's time, amen, to quit playing around. It's time to get serious with God. I have mentioned the last year or so maybe, I'll get back to this in a second, amen, that a lot of our young people, they need, amen, to start praying during the week, fasting during the week, reading your Bible during the week, and getting down sometimes in your bedroom and talk to the Lord and pray instead of waiting till next Sunday. Amen. You'd move along a lot faster. And God can see that you're earnest, sincere, and desiring this. And then that helps Him. So that in... Amen. But here we find church... Declaring, he says, I, I'm going to start over. I, brother, and I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency, excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. In other words, if you, when we get down here, you'll understand what I'm saying. He didn't just come to them on his own intelligence, his own wisdom. He said, well, when I come came not with excellency of speech. Amen? For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Oh, if, some, uh, if a lot of people out there today, a lot of these organizations would come to the understanding and realize where He says, I, and, and say to themselves, I've determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. But no, we got too many out there wanting to think they know everything. They know more than anybody else. They can't be taught anything. You can't teach me nothing. I got more wisdom than you. Church, an attitude like that, whether it be a preacher, a bishop, an elder, or even a saint in the church, you're not going anywhere with God. You've done, you done stopped yourself. You didn't got to the place where you exalted yourself, amen, and it's me and God. And if God don't show it to me, well, I'm not going to receive it. Where did you get that out of God's Word? And all them that's listening, where do you get that? It's just you and God. If it doesn't come from God, I'm not going to believe it. You're in bad shape. It has to come from God. He said, for I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words 
of man's wisdom. Paul's telling them it wasn't this didn't come from me. In other words, if you understand this, I, I wasn't capable of doing this on my own. Come on, church. And neither are you. Whatever it is you've got in your mind, friend, whatever your plan is, and you refuse to listen to, to the ministry and them that's over you, or you're even somebody that's trying to just help you, you want to do this on your own, you're hurting yourself. You're hurting your own self. Now I'll grant you, you can't listen to everybody, but you can listen to those that are called and sent of God. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of the power. It was in the dim- in other words, it came from the, the Spirit of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost. That's where it came from. Come on, saints. We won't go back and tell you when God began to uh, deal with old Saul on his way to Damascus, and how God struck him down, and God revealed things to him, and had this happen and that happen. It took a while, but thank God old Paul got the revelation. And when he got it, God sent him out to preach it. That's why this world's in the shape that it's in. The most of the things, I will go out on a limb here, the most, and I would say most, of the things that's being preached today in these places of worship, it didn't come from God. They did not get that from God. It did not come out of that Bible. Most of the things that's being preached out there about a lot of these preachers came from, and I know it's hard for you to maybe distinguish or understand what I'm saying here, It came from their former pastor. Well, that's fine if your former pastor was in good standing with God and was being led by God and not some other preacher. Too many commentaries in the world today. Too many man-made books and writings in the bookstores today and online on the computer. They're relying on all of these things instead of relying on God. Instead of getting back humble again and and leading down and talking to the Lord. Now, God, I need, I need you, Lord, to open my eyes. I need you, Lord, to open my heart. We're going to get to some of these things. I need you, Lord, to reveal these hidden things unto me so that we can pass it on. A lot of preachers today are not doing that. They're reading it out of books and tracts and listening to CDs of some other preacher that don't even know what God's name is and then passing that on to these people. It's no wonder there's no understanding in this world. It is amazing to me. I started to say this a while ago. Oh my God, oh, so many people today claiming and testifying, preaching or however you want to... That thank God I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank God for filling me with the Holy Ghost. Thank God I've had the Holy Ghost for five years, ten years, fifteen years. You hear all these people saying these things, but then when you get to get with them sometime and try to talk to them, they don't even know the basics of what the Bible is teaching us. But they're claiming to have the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God indwelling in them. The Comforter. The Holy Ghost. Which the Bible said would lead us and guide us into all truth. And bring all things to our remembrance. Whatsoever I've said unto you. And this guy or this person is going to sit here and tell me. Oh I've I've had the Holy Ghost for, for 20 years. And you don't even know what God's name really is. I don't believe it. That's hard for me to accept. If you had, if you have, or have had the Holy Ghost for 20 or 30 years, why hasn't it led you further than where you're at? Why are you sitting here ignorant of all these things of God? 
And I'll grant you there's some people, maybe no doubt, has received the Holy Ghost, maybe, 20 years ago. But did they have they, are, have they been letting it lead them and guide them? You see, we can resist God. There's people here today that's resisting God. That's right. They know what to do. They're just not doing it. Something in the back of their mind is telling them, uh, you're not right on that. You need to watch that. Well, that's been there in the mind for how long? I'm going to tell you something, friend. One day you're going to wake up and it's not going to be there. So while you can hear it, you best listen. He says in verse 5, after talking about how it's the, it's, uh, the, man of, the words of man's wisdom, but it, it wasn't from that, it was in the, from the demonstration of the Spirit and power. In verse 5 it says, Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. God, His Word, Paul, is telling us plainly, Straightforward. He said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Don't let you don't do that. Don't let your faith stand in the wisdom of men. You got to find the wisdom of God. And you can't have somebody else find it for you. There's some things God wants you to learn. There's some things God wants you to look into. You to pray. He said, read. He even told him, read. Show thyself approved unto God. Study, rather. Same thing. A word that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. There's preachers out there at church, they would be ashamed for preaching what they're preaching. Teaching people what they're teaching. It's not Bible. They got that from somebody else, some other source. Now when we... Get done here in, in Corinthians with Paul. I'm going to go back, I rarely do this, to the Old Testament in Genesis. <laughs> and show you that from the beginning, it had to come from God. But they're, they're getting it from every source, as the old saying is, under the sun, except God. Some people are spending too much time on the computer. iPhone. Dictionaries and commentaries. Here's what you need. I want to tell you something, church. You can clear out. Now, I've got a lot of books. but I, I've got a bookshelf in there, plum full of books. And I honestly can tell you this. They haven't been opened up in years. They're, they're up there. But I learned a long time ago. I can't believe everything's in them books. I got to get it from here. And only the Lord can reveal this to us. And through the ministers that He has called. Not every minister out there is called of God. Now there are some, I know that. But not all of them are, church. Let me, let me continue here. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Now there's some people that's taken that and they say, well, my Bible teaches me that I don't need some man. I'm just going to go to God. Now that's, you done missed the whole point. You, you done, you're already out of the water. Amen. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Amen? But in the power of God. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. Wait a minute. Yet not the wisdom of this world. So that tells me there must be two types or more of wisdom. There's the wisdom of this world 
And there's the wisdom of God. What wisdom are you relying on? Which wisdom are you listening to? Learning from? Now Aunt Mary and Uncle John and Papa all this and Papa all that, they may have, although they were wise people, well that's good and probably a lot of them are, but they may, that doesn't mean they have the wisdom of God. <laughs> How many follow me? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go back to six. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes. Not the word princes. He's talking about the leaders, the rulers of this world. Leaders. That come to naught. I asked you, friend, where was all the rulers, the leaders, when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross? Most of them was the one that put him there. And now they're going to turn around these other ones and try to tell you about the one they hung on the cross? Don't even make sense. They were so ignorant, they couldn't recognize him as the Son of God. That yeah, was just Jesus, the Son of Mary and Joseph. I, don't, uh, I know I've been preaching a lot about Jesus' name and Jesus here lately uh, against uh, that phrase. But let me just touch on it. That's all they knew. That's Jesus. Well, look around. Look where we're at today. They still, the majority of these out there rulers and leaders and preachers, about all you can get out of them is Jesus. They could never get Jesus and the Christ together and come up with the Messiah. And they still can't. But we speak the wisdom of God a man in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained. We're going to get to this. Even the hidden mystery, I'm sorry, the hidden wisdom. How many sees that? Which God ordained before the world, amen, unto our glory. Now, if God ordained it, Let's look at some of the things that God has ordained. But J.J., God ordained the Son to be where it's at. He ordained that. Put it there. Spoke it. The stars, the moon, gravity, oxygen. Things that are ordained of God, there's not much you and I can do. The only thing you and I can do with things that are ordained by God is reject it. <laughs> you can't change. Anybody here, can, can you change the, the rotation of the sun? Moon? Stars? Can you change it? Can you change, can you stop gravity? I'm talking about worldwide now. No. Well, God ordained this. I'm not going to finish this, I know. Today. But we speak, Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. People look at us, so, what? You, what? Are you crazy? Well, I don't believe that. Well, I can't see that. Well, I don't get that out of that verse. Well, I understand that. And there's a reason. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. None of the princes. He said none. 
So if none of the princes, none of the rulers, none of the leaders, none of these teachers, whatever word you want to use, if none of them knew, well, where are we going to get it? We'll get it from God. You get it down on your knees. You get it through prayer, fasting, dedicating your life to God, trusting and believing God. Faith comes by hearing. How many is hearing the Word of God? How many of you young people? Amen. How many of you reading the Word of God during the week? Probably if I would come back and, and uh, like I do uh, Brother Clarence here sometimes, if I come back down the road and look you right in the eye and say, uh, I want you to tell me the truth and I don't want you to lie because God's listening to us. <laughs> I'm not asking you. I'm just mm-hmm. using you, okay? How much you read the Word of God this week? Now, if I would come back here to some of you young people, especially you that's in the altar, what we call in the altar, we've got to change that some way, and look you right in the eye and say, now how much of God's Word have you read this week? Some of you might have to say, uh, none. I've been busy. What have you been busy doing? Well, uh, been sleigh riding on the computer, on my iPhone, iPad. I've been doing this, that. And then you wonder, why ain't I getting the Holy Ghost? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the Word of God. The more you read, the more faith you will have. And the more faith you have, you can sit here on Sunday or whenever and say, man, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost tonight. I believe in that. But you never increase your faith. How do you expect to get the Holy Ghost? I'm preaching two messages this morning, I guess. (laughs) One minute I'm on the other stand, the next minute I'm on you young people. Well, I'm going to tell you something, young people. I'm not hollering at you. I'm not mad at you. I love you. And I want you to have the Holy Ghost. And I'm just trying to tell you, you don't get the Holy Ghost on a computer or in games. Amen. And all that's listening out there, you don't get understanding from commentaries, dictionaries, worldly books, bookstore books, this writer and that writer, they're, they're putting out books by the thousands. What are they doing with this one? The more books seem like, the more books that are being published, that's becoming number one sellers, this one just laying on the shelf. Somebody say amen. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, well, they wouldn't have crucified him, the Lord of glory. None of the princes, none of them, the Pharisees, Sadducees, the kings, and the, they, they, they didn't know it. They're out there, crucify him, crucify him. Well, we're going to release one. Which one? Well, Barnabas, Barabbas. Nobody will say, oh, release Jesus Christ. Ignorance. Which none of the princes of this world even knew. Well, if they don't know, how do you expect them one's under them to know? If they can't give it to them, what are they going to get? They have to get it from God. They have to take that measure of faith that God's given to every single one of you. And you need to work with that measure of faith. You need to put that faith, so to speak, to work. You need to get down and talk to the Lord. Now, Lord, I know you've given me, the Word tells me, you gave me, amen, a measure of faith. And I want, Lord, I want to use that faith, that little bit of faith you gave me. And I want to read your Word. And I, I need you to open my eyes, my understanding. Open my heart to the Scriptures. And you'll see it starting to grow. You can't get it nowhere else. It's not going to come that way. Stay with me for a little while today. None of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 
How many of you can understand, if we take another minute here, all those people that was around there on, on, uh, at Golgotha, and they're, and they're getting ready to nail Jesus Christ to the cross and put Him up there. Instead of they known, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have done it. They wouldn't have crucified the Lord. Well, if we understand, if those people that was guilty of all this, and even them that didn't even pick up a hammer, were just back there saying, get rid of Him, crucify Him. If they had known it, they would not have done it. Well, can't you understand? If you don't know the truth, if you don't have this understanding, this wisdom uh, from heaven, you're going to do things you shouldn't be doing. Not even know why you're doing it. You're going to be. You're going to resort back to like Paul, uh, Saul was before he became Paul. Oh, Saul thought he was doing God's will. He wasn't doing God's will. He was working against God. How many in you this morning is work in reality? You're working against God. Don't get upset. Don't get offended. These, are, these things are real. It happens to people. Paul didn't know uh, that he was doing something so bad. He thought he was doing something good. Just because you think what you're doing is good, doesn't mean it's good. What does the Word say about it? And you can't ask man sometimes, is this okay? Sometimes, and I understand it. And sometimes it's okay in certain things, but I tell you, a lot of people ask, well, they want to go to the preacher, or the pastor, or some older saint, and you think this will be all right? Wait a minute. Why don't you ask God? <laughs> Why don't you get down and ask God? Or don't you trust the Lord? Well, I believe, I, I don't think God will hear me like He would you. Well, then you're just simply admitting you're not where you, where you should be with the Lord. So if you're not where you should be with the Lord, why should you be digging somewhere else? None, none. He didn't say some. There's a big difference between some and none. None. That means not single, not a single one of them knew what they were doing. Don't you think that's why the Lord hung there on the cross just before He died, looked down upon them and said, Now Lord, forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. I'm going to tell some of you this morning, you don't know what you're doing. I don't think you understand just how far away from God you are. You can sit around and think good things and, and pretend this and hope this, but where are you in reality? Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. I pray God forgive us. Any of us in here, even you, especially you young people, Lord, if they're ignorant, don't know what's going on, forgive them. But wake them up. Uh, now, you parents, don't you parents get mad at me? If you do, I'm going to put you in the same place as your kids is. Is that all right? I said, is that all right? Now, Brother Randy, you need to take it a little easy on these young, on these children. Well, some of them are not really children anymore. Little children. They're old enough now to understand, my God, there is a God. I need Him. Amen. Some of them need to be saying, oh, if they don't hurry up here pretty soon, I'm going to the altar anyhow. 
I don't care if I disrupt the whole service, I'm going to get a hold of God. That's what it's going to take, friend. I said, that's what it's going to take. Lord, I never thought I'd be in with Paul this long this morning. <laughs> but we're, we're learning something. But he said, but as it is written. Now when, when Paul is talking to the Corinthian church about, but as it is written, he didn't say, but as it's written by some commentary, as it's written in, in this commentary, that commentary, or this bestseller. No, when he said it is written where it was written, he's talking about his word, Brother J.J. As it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things the things. That's why I said, well, people today, they're ignorant of a lot of the things of God. They're ignorant of how God thinks. They're ignorant of, the, of how God looks at things. How God reacts to things. They're ignorant of those things. Why? Because, well, they, they study and they go to school and they do good on their, on their classes. Uh, amen. Because we got a test coming up and amen. I want to make an A on it or I want to at least pass it. So they study. How many is studying the Word? Don't you want to get a good grade with the Lord? Doesn't God deserve, amen, your study time? I have not seen or you heard. I hadn't seen. Now wait a minute. We're up here in, in uh, New Testament. We're up here in 1 Corinthians. One of the epistles, the first epistle that old Paul was writing to the Corinthian church. Amen? Eye has not seen nor ear heard. Man, there's a lot of people lived in this, that was born, lived, and died long before this. Billions and billions of people. But Paul still said, I has not seen nor ear heard, even have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that what? Take him for granted? That's heard of him? That believes there is a God? No, that's not what Paul said. Eyes not seen, ears not heard. Amen. The things that God has prepared for them that what? Huh? That love Him. Do you love God? How many of you really love God this morning? Now I know a lot of you do, but I'm, I'm just putting it over everybody so them that, that don't love Him will get the message. I'm trying to trick you. I'm pulling a fast one on you. I'm getting you thinking, do you love God? If you haven't even opened up that Bible this week, and you haven't got down and prayed this week, and meditated some on God, uh, we're going to have to question that. Now, Brother Randall, these children, I wish you quit calling them all... See, that, that's kind of relaying a message they're too young. Well, I'll tell you what, next time you think uh, I'm treating them, trying to treat them older than they really are, just give them a phone, an iPad, and watch them. Well, I've seen some get that thing out. Mine's in the office. And and they get on there and they done typed out two or three paragraphs where I can even get my phone on. And you want to tell me now they're just children. Huh? Now, Brother Randall, take it easy. 
Is the devil taking it easy on you? I downloaded something on my phone the other day. After I downloaded two of them, my phone didn't look right. It wasn't even acting right. I played around there for I don't know know, an hour or so, trying to get that thing back the way it was, tried to delete what I downloaded. Couldn't even do that. Jared and him came over and there's Zoe. I told Zoe what I was done. She said, let me see that. She got that phone. She's flitting around there within, I don't know, three minutes, five minutes. It wasn't no time. Here you go. I looked at the phone right back where it was at. So, and I'm talking to somebody that's younger than Zoe. Zoe, I know, is she, she's not what you call a child anymore, Karen. your baby. She's a young woman. And these others up in their teenage years, they're not babies. They've got a brain. (laughs) And it works good on a lot of things. I wonder how many young people or children, they call them, don't know a lot about God because you don't trust them enough. You done run them down so much, tell them they're kids, they can't understand anything. They believe in you. This mind of your church is a marvelous thing. In a few minutes, we're going to go back to Genesis and get into our Bible lesson. This is just warming you up. Ah, it says, but it is written, I is not, it is written. Now, how many of you know from my teaching and preaching already, if it's written, it's written, it's settled. Yes. Well, Paul said now, it's written. Amen. I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So Paul is saying to this church, these people that have gotten some knowledge. They have heard the message. They've repented. They've been baptized. Got the Holy Ghost. But he's telling them, he said, now wait a minute. But it's written. Amen? But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. But God has revealed them unto us. Well, God is still working like that today. God never changes. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Here's what I wanted to get. For one man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man is in him, which is in him. So even so the things of God knoweth no man. The things of God knoweth no man. but the Spirit of God. That means until you get the Spirit of God, you are fooling yourselves and everybody else if you think or even think you know the things of God. There's the church, there's people that don't even go to church. They don't hardly ever read the Bible. They've never repented in the name of Jesus Christ. They've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Never received the Holy Ghost. But they actually think they know more than you and I do. They're self-learned. Well, I've been reading this book for long before you was born, son. Well, that natural man don't know the things of God. (laughs) Except the Spirit of God to be in him. I don't care how much you read it. I don't care how much your daddy or mommy read it to you. If they wasn't saved, they wasn't telling you right anyhow. Oh, that's going to offend people. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Well, I don't believe in that Holy Ghost. I don't believe in receiving the Holy Ghost. 
and those tongues and all that. You, you don't believe none of that? But where did you get your understanding of God? It had to come through it. For the Spirit searches all things, they the deep things of God. What man knoweth things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man except, uh, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God. Now listen, but the Spirit of God, that you might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God will give it to you. Now for a little while, I want to go back to Genesis. In the beginning... You might say, no, brother, you're going all the way from here on back here. Well, we just want to verify what Paul's saying. He created Adam, the first Adam. The Bible says he created him in his image after his likeness. He didn't create him as a baby or a child or a young person. I don't know how old he was, but anyhow, he was a full-grown man. And when God made all this other stuff, all these things. And then the Bible says, and let me, before I get ahead of myself, he come down, you all know this, I know. He come down after he made the man and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He didn't have the breath of life by just being made of God. He was in God's image. He's after his likeness, maybe. What God's in his mind, what he's going to be. But he didn't have the spirit of life in him. God breathed it into him. And he became a living soul. And what happened? <clears throat> after God made this and this and this and that, then he brought all these animals, and he brought them to Adam. And told Adam, now whatever you name it, that's what it's going to be. So we've learned, see, we learned from that that when Adam was created in God's image and after his likeness, and then after he breathed into his nostrils the, spirit, the, the, you know, the breath of, of life, which is the Spirit of God, he became a living soul. He was intelligent. Adam couldn't have named anything until the Spirit of life got into him. created and there he is but it wasn't until God breathed into his nostrils the spirit of God went into him and he became a living soul now he's got a mind intelligence a vocabulary to put us all to shame can you imagine God come to one of us and say now all these animals and things that I've made I'm going to bring them all before you however God did it I want you to give each one of them a name. My Lord, we'd have flipped out. We'd have probably had a nervous breakdown. I don't know what to name it. But he named every one of them. Why? The Spirit of God had come into him. His mind was opened up. He had understanding he didn't have before. He had something in him that's moving him, revealing things to him, giving him, if you will, things. Yeah. Gave him knowledge and understanding. That's why I don't know what you're waiting on. You need the Spirit of God. You need God to breathe in you. Yeah. Even there in the New Testament, so they breathed on them yeah. and might receive the Holy Ghost. Breathed on him. It's like he did Adam. Why won't you let God breathe on you? Huh? Are you too busy or too your mind is all bogged up thinking of I gotta speak in tongues, I gotta speak, I gotta do this, I gotta jump up and down, I gotta run run around the church. Where do you find that? What you need to do, you need to let God enter your life and bring life into you. And bring understanding into you. Bring your, your mind, put your mind the way it should be. See, we're born, amen, and we're a little baby, and or they say you're mine, and I understand that. I'm not denying that. 
the little children, especially little babies, their mind is like a sponge, they say. And it just soaks up knowledge, learn things. But there's one thing it ain't learning. It's that little baby. And he'll never learn it until God enters that child when he gets older. Amen. Oh, it's, it's soaking up. Yeah, it's soaking. It's soaking up every bad word mom and dad says. Every time they get drunk, it's just soaking it in. Every time they're doing this or hurting somebody or lying, telling a fib, yeah, they're soaking it up. Parents, you might want to get that child somewhere in an altar or in church where they can soak up the Word of God and let God come into them and open their mind. Adam could talk. No doubt. I did read something more one time where I was thinking, I, can't, I think about that a lot. And I come across something. Can you imagine how much thought would have had to have went in to Adam to name in all these animals? I mean, you take something like a... Oh, I'm just picking out some. All of a sudden, here comes a ugliest old bat you ever seen. Man, that thing's ugly. What in the world am I going to name that? Big old hippopotamus with a mouth as big as I am. Well, Lord, <laughs> uh, see how intelligent he must have been? But don't forget, he had the Spirit of God in him now. You need the Spirit of God, young people. I'm not saying children, I'm saying young people. You need God in you. These preachers out there in the world, they need the Spirit of God, the true, genuine Holy Ghost inside of them so that they can understand this. It's amazing when you can get preached to a preacher. He's supposed to be a preacher. Supposed to be a pastor, bishop, whatever. And you preached uh, right out of God's Word. And they look at this. Well, I don't know about that. How long have you had the Holy Ghost? Well, I've had the Holy Ghost ever since I was 20. And you're 60, 70 now. And you don't. You, well, what has the Holy Ghost done for you? Look what the Holy Ghost done for Adam. Later we find oh Noah coming on the scene. The world is full of sin. Nobody's believing in God except Noah. God's decided God's already decided I'm going to destroy it all. But then the Bible, thank God, he looked over and he seen he said, but he found grace. But Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. He told Noah what he's going to do and told Noah what to do. Now, wait a minute. I don't even know at that particular time if they even had a canoe. Maybe they did. But no matter what they had, it won't match that ark. He told this man to build something that is going to save you, your house, and two of all the animals, amen, and spare you through the biggest flood that ever hit the planet. And as I've said so many times, no electricity, no Black and Decker saws, no nailers, no Stanley tape measures. Where did that man get enough sense, enough mind about him? God told him to build, told him now he, he did tell him how long he wanted it and how wide. But church, somebody like me can't build an ark. You can tell me all day long how long you want it, but that's not going to help me. 
You can tell me 15 times how wide you want it and how many floors you want in it. Well, that's good, Lord, but I don't know how to build no ark. I couldn't even build a, a canoe. What am I saying? What are, you, what are you getting into, Brother Randall? I'm trying to tell you, there's a man that God had given wisdom and nobody else on the planet done anything like that. You think Noah is just one of millions? No. God moved on that man. See, Noah, remember what he said? Noah found grace. Favor with God. Young people, when God, when you allow God to find favor or grace with you, huh? when you open up, quit worrying about everything, give Him some of your time during the week, and you talk and pray. Well, I thought that was for old people. Where did you get? You never heard me preach that. Church of Jesus Christ don't preach. You got to be a, a senior in the church before you really pray a lot and read the Bible and you know talk about God. I think that's what's in their mind. You need to get in, in, in the church, not sitting in the church. You need to get in the church now. And let God mature you and grow you up in the church. And I'm going to tell you a little secret, all of you, younger ones. You're not getting younger. Do you hear me? You're getting older. Just ask some of us. What are you waiting on? Well, I don't know. When I'm 50, I'll get serious. You don't even know if you're going to live to be 50. I'm just saying, church, you need understanding and it only comes from God. You're not going to wake up one day and say, well, thank the Lord. Man, I know. I know everything about the Lord. I know them, man, them scriptures as clear as a bell now. On your own? No, that's not going to happen. You need the Holy Ghost. I'm going to have to finish this another day. I can see that. Oh, Lord. Let me read just a couple of things here. Nehemiah. Everybody knows where I'm going. Anybody know what chapter I'm going to? Huh? Eight. Nehemiah 8. I love this chapter. Nehemiah chapter 8. Starting at verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man in the street that was before the water gate. And best we can find out, that was a big wide area out in front of the water gate there. And they spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. They spake unto Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book. I underlined that a long time ago, my Bring the book. People today don't even bring their book to church, I don't think. And if they brought it, it's in that little slot there in the back of the seat. It's probably been in there and needs to be dusted. These people, they wanted to hear what God, if you read this whole story, we won't take the time. If you read all of this about the law of Moses, Moses didn't just get up one day and say, oh yeah, okay, I'm going to write a book. No, God moved on him. And God told him exactly what he wanted in there for the people. Today, they're not going to the, if I can put it like this, to the book uh, or the law of Moses. They're going to the Bible bookstore. 
on the computer to some commentary, some mega church, got their information. Lord, Lord. Bring the book, the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law, he brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. So that tells me they, they didn't bring just all the little ones. I don't know what they've done with them. But they brought all them that could understand. Well, let me tell you something. There's only one or two, maybe three, four, at the most in here today that couldn't understand most things. You're gonna, you may not understand it all, but you'll get the general idea. And all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from morning to midday. Before the men and the women and those that could understand. Because <coughs> I was going to get into understanding here. But we spent a lot more time than we thought uh, in, with Paul. But we'll get to it. And those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were, what? Attentive. Under the book of the law. In other words, they were listening. Paying attention. How many in here this morning is listening to me? Paying attention to me? How many of you are attentive to what I'm saying? Are you sitting there drawing something? Writing your boyfriend a note, or worse yet, on your phone texting somebody. I've told you before, you got no business texting in the church. Now, sometimes they might be an emergency and somebody might text, and I've told people that'd be all right, but that don't mean that when somebody's like that, they're texting, texting the children. I would think if they're going to text something important, it'd be to some of the adults. A saint in the church. Uh oh. Texting is good, but texting can be misused. Let me get back. Who were attentive under the book of the law, and Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. I'm not going to read all these names. Jump down to five. These are all some men that was there. And then Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above the people. Now, I don't mean naturally above them uh, in an arrogant way. He's on the pulpit, like we've got one here. So he was above the people, and he's going to begin to read. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and the people answered, Amen. 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 When was the last time you said amen when I'm reading the Bible to you? Amen. amen. And where does it say that you young people, you young, you young ones can't say amen? Oh, now don't get mad, parents. If you do, Brother Lee said, I know who your pappy is. Young people, you can say amen. Well, I don't want to say amen too loud. Cameron might hear me. Huh? I say too, too loud. Mom will hear me. Think I'm getting spiritual on her. Well, it might be time for you to get spiritual, friend. Lifted up their hands. Amen. Lifted up their hands. You don't see too much of that anymore. You see some. But this wasn't 
singing, I got the Holy Ghost. This was reading the word, uh, the law of Moses. And in the reading of the law. Oh, amen. See, they were hungry. They have requested. Bring the book. How many in the church today is asking, bring the book? No, they they want to no, give us another song. Let's sing some more. Let's do this. Let's do that. I don't hear too many people saying, let's bring the book. Let's get in the Word today. Not that some of you don't like it and wouldn't, but I'm just saying we've got out of the habit of acting and being like these people were. And the people answered, Amen! Amen! Lifted up their hands. I brought this out not too long ago. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now, it might be, uh, you know, a little hard on you to raise your hand and lower your head at the same time. <laughs> but it's not as hard as you think. I say amen. amen. Just, uh, I'm not trying to work anything up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get something in your mind. Stay it. Everybody stand if you can't stand. If you can't, don't worry about it. What we just found out here? The reading out of the law of Moses. The written Word of God. The commandments. The statues. They requested them to bring the book. They fixed an area for them. Had a pulpit. Opened up the book. And he began to read. Right out of God's Word that God had written. And the Bible says that when he began to read, now if you can, you can do this. The Bible says they said, Amen. Amen. Raised their hands and lowered their head toward the ground. Well, I don't hear too many. Amen. 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 See, they raised their hands to praise. They lowered their head to worship. Hallelujah. And they're saying amen. Because they are agreeing. We need that back in the church today. Instead of sitting there like a knot on a log, we need to get involved in God's Word. Participate in it. Oh, go away. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, people today... Well, now, Brother Randall, that's all right for Clarence, but now that's just not me. What do you mean that's not you? Where do we get clarified in the Bible that that's not you? Ah, Lord. I was old, some of you in here, most of you. I, is that, is that so hard? Amen. Lower the head. <laughs> Amen. I think sometimes God would just love to see some people lower their heads, raise their hands, and say amen to the preaching of the Word of God. They might even get a good blessing. But no, we've gone a year after year, time after time, amen, just sitting there in that old padded chair, that padded seat, uh, amen, with all the air conditioners, the heat, uh, and the fans, uh, and we've gotten so lazy that nobody wants to recognize God. Nobody wants to praise Him. Nobody wants to lift their hands anymore. Amen. Church, we need to get back to having church. That's having church. 
cranking up the music is not having church. In fact, I say to you, we need to turn down the music sometimes. Actually, to be, be honest, we need to, we need to shut down the music. I think I had been, I don't know, a couple of years. I got it might do some musicians. It might do your world of good to set your instrument down and get in that altar. Well, there ain't going to be no singing. There ain't going to be no... How are you going to get into the beat of that music? That's the problem. Everybody's wanting to get in the beat. I don't need to get in the beat. I need to get in the spirit. So musicians, I want, you to, I want you to understand you don't have to be up for the whole service. Pray. When God's moving and the Spirit's moving, my God, I hate to, I hate to tell you, who can I use and not get upset? J.J.? We could do without your piano playing for a little while. <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from, don't you? Jarrett, Sister Monica, I was going to say Brother John, but I don't, he don't play nothing that I know of. The drums. Sometimes we need you in, in here praying more than playing. We need you praying more than praying. Oh, I forgot Sister Marilyn. We all love Sister Marilyn. Thank God for her musical talents. You know, sometimes Sister Marilyn, maybe I want to come down and pray or just sit and pray. Now, he held them there about half a day or more. So just give me a few more minutes if you don't mind. All the people answered, Amen, lifted up their hands and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Jump down to the latter part of seven. I'm not going to try to pronounce all them names. And these, these men, church, caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. Now you just got problems. You don't have to worry about it. But the rest of us, my God, stood in their place. I've known churches, and I'm not downgrading them. I'm judging them. That's their business, and and I don't think there's anything so much wrong with that. But sometimes you churches, certain places of worship, when they open up the service, and the preacher gets up and he'll open the scripture, uh, you know, Matthew two and four, so everybody will stand for the reading of the word. As soon as that word's gone by, they're sitting. And I'll tell you what else I've seen. There's some people who don't even want to stand for that. Uh-oh. They reverenced God in His Word. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly. Distinctly. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You may be seated. They read it distinctly. They didn't just say, and Peter said, and they repent, be baptized. They said, and Peter said to repent. Distinct, bring it out clear. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm just using Acts 2.38. And they read it distinctly. In other words, church, they're, they're wanting to make sure all these people, it's one thing to have this law, this law of Moses, the New Testament. It's one thing to have it. But they saw the need of understanding it. 
And they saw the need of reading it uh, to the people and expounding it to the people so that they can understand what God is saying, what God is requiring out of them. Today, a lot of preachers just want to run her up and down and down and can't even hear what they're saying half the time. They're talking in tongues and everything else. Who's getting anything out of the Word of God? Oh, I'll probably get criticized for that one too. There's a place to worship God. There's a place for tongues. When a preacher gets up and he's running around and he's hollering, hollering, amen, and talking so fast or whatever he's doing, you can't understand. How many of you ever sat and listened to a preacher you couldn't understand a thing he was saying? I have. He's all over the church. I don't think you can do what I'm in my mind as some preachers I don't think you can bring God's Word out acting the way they're acting distinctly. Lord, Lord, I'll get, I know I'm going to be criticized. I'm not against getting excited in the Lord. I get excited in the Lord. But my Lord, let people hear the Word of God distinctly. Make it plain to them. No, they're too, they're too afraid of, of hindering, or not hearing. They're too uh, afraid of, of uh, what should I say? Making ma- offending, making, making somebody mad. Well, you, he was so, pl- I know he meant that for me. Well, if I did, you ought to thank God that God loved you enough, took the time and effort to move on me, to move on, to preach to you, that you could hear it. So you're sitting there getting offended. You say, well, my Lord, thank you, Lord. They read in the book of the law of God distinctly gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Now, here I want to deal with that a minute. Caused them. They didn't just get up and say, and Peter said, "On them, repent and be baptized, every one in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, you shall receive the Holy Ghost." All right, the blood's off me; it's on you. Let's go home. Well, you might have quoted it out real loud, but did you explain it to them? Come on. Gave the sense, caused them to understand. Well, if they don't understand; it ain't my fault. Like a preacher one time told me, I'll never forget it as long as I live. We was going to Jamaica. Well, we've been going to Jamaica for years. But uh, somebody said something about him going or something. He said, no, no, you ain't going to find me over there. I'm like, he said, if, he said uh, if, they hear, if they hear the gospel, they're going to have to hear it from somebody but me, besides me. He'd have no desire to go. What are you talking about? Hard to listen to somebody after that. That's pretty rough. Of course, they didn't last long. They're not in the Church of Jesus Christ. Actually, they're not even alive now. How can you make a if they get saved, it'll be without me. I'm gonna close here in a little bit. Him I wrote, which is, well, let me read on down here. Well, okay. And Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto, unto the Lord your God. This day, what, why did he say this day is holy? Because they brought the word to him and expounding it to him. What am I doing this morning? I'm doing my best to expound to you some of these scriptures. Get you to understand. So that would mean then that this is a holy day. Anybody here thought of that already? Man, this is, this, this is a holy day. Amen. 
This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. Amen? Well, listen. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. They wept. I think when he used the word wept there, I think it's more than just a little tear. They wept when they heard that word. See, a while ago, they stood up when they started reading. They stood. And then when they started reading it, their hands went in the air. Their mouth began to say, Amen. Their head was bowed to the ground. They reverenced God's word. Are you? Is it affecting you like that? Are you thankful we can come here, even if it's just on Sunday right now, but we're gonna we're gonna move up here pretty soon. Are you thankful? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We'll get back to having services. Or are you going to let the flesh say, oh, man, I'm kind of getting used to this. Thursday's off. Don't have this. Don't have that. Why, I thank the Lord, I don't even have to go to church and shake anybody's hand. That's the attitude some people can get in. I'm going to close with this. <laughs> this day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, and nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Mourn not. In other words, I think somebody said, why would he tell them not to do that? Well, First thing comes to my mind, he's probably looking at them thinking, they're taking this, maybe they're not taking this right. You ought to be happy. You ought to be rejoicing. You heard the Word of God. And that we're expounding it to you distinctly. My, my, my. Well, praise the Lord. Good to be in God's house. Good to have the, the law of the Lord here in front of us. Good to have people here that love God. People here that have the Holy Ghost. Good to feel the Lord. It's good to look into His Word and say, wow, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I remember reading that one time. Lord, Lord, thank you, Lord. Help me never forget that, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Young people, you ought to be saying, Oh, Lord, I'm sorry I haven't given you more time. Yes. Young people, listen to me. You ought to talk to God. Yes. Lord, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I don't pray like I should. I'm, I, I'm sorry, Lord, I haven't been reading your word. Yes. Lord, it's been so long since I really read it and looked into it. Lord, I'm sorry I didn't pray today at church. <laughs> Lord, I'm, I, I'm sorry I, I go against my parents. And they're trying to teach me what's right and wrong. I don't mean to be like that, Lord. See, God can give you strength. But you've got to ask. My, my, my. I was going to have a song and thought, well, maybe they'll come, but you know what? I'm not going to do that. You should have already come. And now we're going to close. So either Thursday, if it gets about 8 or 90, we're here at this Bible study. Or next Sunday, you might want to get ready between now and then. Or even get down in your bedroom Amen. and pray yes. 
and worship God and repent of all your shortcomings. No, you may not be out here doing all these ungodly things you call ungodly, but I'm sure you could repent of not praying enough, not reading your word, God. I'm sorry about that. Forgive me, God. And always remember, because we want to do it distinctly, that repentance and baptism should be preached in His name. Don't you say, I'm sorry, God, and on the way out to the yard, Lord, I repent. In the name of Jesus Christ, I repent and mean it and be sorry. Them little running out the door repenting, I don't know about. Huh? Church, we've got it. I don't know what you've been doing with it, but you'll never stand before God and say, I didn't hear, I didn't know, nobody told me. You've been told many times. It's right there in your lap. He breathed on them. Receive ye the Holy Ghost.